Nice place to be lost. So what does that look like when God sends his angels? God says, okay, there, there she is again. Okay, go, 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 go. She's going to get on a bus with somebody and she doesn't know who it is. The angels come down and I get on the bus and I don't know who I'm with. But I have to ride safely through the southern, the uh, eastern Sinai from the south point where I am all the way to the north point in the night. And the eastern part of the Sinai is extremely militarized as well because, well, like I mentioned before, terrorists. So here I am going through there, and we keep getting stopped at military checkpoints. And they look in the van, they want to know who she is. And my driver, he didn't speak English, I don't speak Arabic, but miraculously we were able to understand each other all night through the drive. We had agreed on a price, which I thought was fair because I had no idea what I was in for. I thought it was going to be a couple hours, here, there, <coughs> off we go. It turned out to be approximately a six hour drive through countless military checkpoints. And I understood that this driver was giving a safe explanation of who I was every time to get us through safely. Amazing. As I watched him and I looked around the van and I looked around where we were driving, I realized my driver was probably a smuggler, probably a Bedouin smuggler in that part of the desert. And he was smuggling this lost white girl all the way through the Eastern Sinai. So sometimes your angel looks like a Bedouin smuggler, but that's who God sends because that's the right person to do the job. But I wasn't finished being in need of God's angels. There was another time, again, same vicinity in Egypt. I keep going back there, I guess. I want to see how much true this is about what the angels are up to for me. So picture this, I've been trying to get into Israel, but my records show that I've been to Gaza. Now, I'm not sure how astute you are in Israeli-Gaza politics, but if you've been to Gaza, Israel doesn't really want you. But they're going to mess with you just a little bit. So I had taken the bus, a six-hour drive from Cairo, but because it had been rainy and flooding and the roads were washed out and everything, that nice six-hour drive took about 14 hours. So I was exhausted. I was emotionally exhausted. I was physically exhausted. And there I was all excited to go into Israel, had my bags with me. Then I got into the border terminal. And they looked me up on the computer. Ooh, you've been to Gaza. Why are you coming to Israel? Are you trying to get to Gaza? You want to go to Gaza again? I said, no, no, I am trying to get to Israel. Uh, we don't think so. We think you're trying to go to Gaza. Are you trying to go to Gaza again? Because it looks like you're going to Gaza again. No, I'm trying to go to Israel. <coughs> oh, we think you're trying to go to Gaza. So they held me there and held me there and held me there. And I realized that they're looking me up on Facebook to see where I think I'm going. So I had to, I had to uh, delete my Facebook account very quickly. And I don't know if I got it in time, but there I was sitting. And, and the sun had risen, the sun was starting to go, it was afternoon, and I said, okay, listen, we both know you're not letting me out that door. Could you just let me out that door back into Egypt while it's still daylight? I'll come back in a minute. So consequently, it was nine o'clock at night by the time they decided to escort me, rather nicely, back out onto the Egypt side, but this time it was pitch black night, and I knew it was going to be night, and I didn't want to go in the night, because that part of Egypt, there's nothing there, and at night there's no buses coming through either. So here I am, shoved out the door, suitcases in hand, nowhere to go, terrified because this part of the Sinai is kind of a hotbed for terrorism. And there I am out in the middle of the night with my suitcases walking down the street, terrified of everybody who looked at me. Taxi drivers keep trying to beckon me into their cabs, but I know the danger that lies there, and I just kept snapping at them because nobody was going to think I was weak. No, I don't want to ride. No, I don't need a ride. No, I don't know where I'm going. Stop it. Don't ask me. As I'm walking down the highway with my suitcases, just going into the night. God saw this. Okay, we're gonna need another angel. To, no, 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 forget it, make it two, make it two. Go, 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 she's going down the road, she's walking down the road. And 
and zoom, they came down. And a bus pulled up. Do you need a ride? No, I don't need a ride. I don't need a ride. I'm fine. I'm terrified. And he said, I've got two people who are going to a place near here. They're from Canada. It's okay. Now, when you're a woman traveling alone in the middle of the night in the southern part of the Sinai, you're not just afraid of the ethnicity of the people, you're afraid of being accosted because being a woman alone in the dark in Egypt is not always safe. And I didn't know that God had already sent his angels. And when God sends his angels, he knows exactly what we're afraid of. He knows exactly what we need. And let's be honest, God has a pretty good sense of humor, as I was about to find out. So I reluctantly grabbed my bags, got on the bus, very nervous. I sat down, and these two men looked at me. Oh, bonjour. We are a couple from Montreal. Here I was in the middle of the Sinai, in the middle of the night, with a gay couple from Montreal. I was safe. <laughs> and they took me to the resort that they were going to. It cost me five bucks for the night. I didn't worry. I felt comfortable. I felt safe. God sends his angels to watch over us. And it doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing. We don't have to be sitting all nicely in Canada doing what we think everybody else should be thinking we should be doing. No. God follows us and he commands his angels concerning us and he sends them to us when we need them. Sometimes they look like a Bedouin smuggler. Sometimes they might look like a gay couple from Montreal. Look for your angels because they're there. They're coming. God is watching out for you. Thank you. <laughs>